Okay, picking back up with number six. Uh, the circle described in problem five, uh, center negative two, five, radius three, with the equation, okay, we did that, uh, has two y-intercepts, what are they? Okay, so we have two ways of doing this. Uh, one is the, the analytic approach where we know that y-intercepts are found where x is equal to zero. So if we had that, we could simply go to the equation up here in blue and set x equal to zero and then solve for y. So if we do that, we see x is zero. So we have zero plus two quantity squared plus y minus five quantity squared is equal to nine. So we have four plus here we have y squared minus 10y plus 25. Again, hopefully you can expand that very quickly. Um, is equal to 9. Uh, so what do we have? We have y squared um, minus 10y. We have 29 and then less 9 plus 20 is equal to 0. And we have to solve this quadratic equation. So uh, let me solve this one by completing the square. I'll go ahead and move the 20 over. We have y squared minus 10y is equal to negative 20. We'll complete the square by taking half of negative 10, which is negative 5, squaring it, which is 25. Add that to both sides. Uh, yes, you should be able to solve quadratics by completing the square. And so now we have y minus 5 quantity squared is equal to 5. And we take the square root of both sides. Uh, we're effectively, remember, raising both sides of this to the one-half power. This is our power rule approach. Or take the square root of both sides. And when you do that, you get y minus 5, remembering that whenever you take the square root, you have to include both the positive and minus square root of 5. And then lastly, uh, solve for y. y is going to be equal to 5 plus or minus the square root of 5. Okay, so that would be the answer to the problem. Uh, 5 plus or minus the square root of 5. Um, however, there's another approach to this problem. Let's suppose we did not know the analytic idea, and all we had was a picture. So let's uh, look at the choices. And just, you know, we're going to do this almost from a simplistic, uh, early, early geometry type of approach, just to see whether or not we can figure out the right answer from the choices given. A lot of times you'll do this in uh, SAT tests. If you don't know one approach, try something else. So let me just make some facts here. I'm looking at these radicals, square root 20, square root 5. There's another square root 20, square root 20, or square root 5 and square root 10. We know the square root of 4 is equal to 2. We also know the square root of 9 is equal to 3. So if we had to guesstimate the square root of 5 is somewhere between the square root of 4 and the square root of 9. So let's just say about 2 and a half. And you'll see where I'm going in just a minute. Likewise, we know the square root of 16 is 4. So if we had to guesstimate the square root of 10, well, the square root of 10 is some number between the square root of 9 and the square root of 16. Uh, it's probably closer to 3. I'm going to call it just 3 and a half. And then lastly, we have the square root of 25, we know is 5. So that if we had to estimate the square root of 20, square root of 20, uh, that's going to be about four and a half, some number between four and five. Okay, so with those approximations, uh, we are going to say that these answer choices would be about this. So here we're going to have five uh, plus or minus four and a half, right? Or if you want, this is going to be uh, nine and a half for the bigger one, and then one half for the smaller one. But I'm going to just focus on the larger of the two here for this little discussion. Okay, about nine and a half. Uh, likewise, this is going to be 10 uh, plus, and again, we're just going to look at the larger of the two. We said the square root of five is about two and a half. So that's what, 12 and a half. Uh, this one, we have 10, uh, the larger, would be the square root of 20, we said was about four and a half. So that's 14 and a half. 
And then this one would be five plus two and a half. So that's about seven and a half. And this one would be five plus three and a half. And so that's about eight and a half. Okay. Now let's draw a sketch. We don't have to be super accurate here, but I'm going to try to make it reasonably good. We have a center at negative two, five, one, two, there's negative two, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so here's our center point. I'm going to make this y axis go up a little bit because I, I'm interested in uh, not just five, but Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and so forth. Okay, and we are we're told that the radius is three units. So let's see, here's our center point, and we're going to go three units for the radius. Well, let me go three units down. One, two, three, that's about there. Three units up. One, two, three, that's about there. Three units over. I'll need some tick marks over here. Let's see. One, two, so three units over, uh, about one, two, three, about there, and three units to the right, uh, one, two, and then three is over here. So let's see, uh, one, two would put us there on the y-axis, and then three right about there. Okay, so this is sort of, if we had graph paper, this would be easier, but we can see that our circle is going to fall about like this, and I'm going to try to draw this reasonably accurately. I'm just trying to make a round circle. Okay, so I have a center at negative 2, 5, and the radius is 3, and we're asked about these y-intercepts. So what might that number be? And since we're looking at the larger, well, we can just count it off. Let's see, we had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, there's 8, so I don't know, 7 and a half ish Well, that's this. That's our choice. All the other ones are way too big. I mean, for example, choice E, we were up at eight and a half. We know the top of the circle is at eight, right? Because this was at five, six, seven. This is at eight up here. Eight and a half, that cannot be the Y intercept. So that's out. And all these others are even larger than that. So the only one that makes sense of our choices is choice D. Okay? Number seven, uh, put the circle whose equation is in graphing form. So we're going to have to complete the square here. This is a relatively straightforward. Remember, all circles uh, in graphing form look like this, where it's x minus h quantity squared, and then y minus k quantity squared is equal to the radius squared. And we have to make this circle look like that. So we have x squared. That's the only uh, x term that's there. So effectively, it's x minus 0 squared, but you don't need to do that. All the choices just have x squared there. So we have to complete the square in y. So what do we have? We have plus y squared minus y minus 11 fourths is equal to 0. Okay, so the process of completing the square, we're going to move this constant, first of all, uh, and leave a gap there. So we have x squared plus y squared minus y is equal to 11 fourths. And then we're going to fill that gap in. We're going to look at this coefficient here. This is negative 1. We're going to take half of that, which is negative 1 half, and then we're going to square that, which is positive 1 fourth, right? Negative 1 half times negative 1 half is positive 1 fourth. We add that to both sides, and we have now completed the square. Okay, so here we are, x squared, this is now going to be y minus one-half, quantity squared, and on the right side we have 11 fourths and one-fourth is 12 fourths, or three. Okay, so choice A. Number eight. Uh, consider this function, this is a uh, quadratic and we're asked to um, evaluate and simplify various values. And I've got some screenshots from my calculator here just to sort of talk about those. So let me go and enter this function in as y1, x squared minus 6x plus 5, x squared minus 6x plus 5, 
Okay, and uh, we can certainly graph it. Uh, zoom 6 will graph that for us. There's our parabola, similar to our screenshot here on my on my debrief. Now, obviously, you didn't have this on the exam, but all you had was the equation, and you're asked to put x is equal to 1 in there, right? So there's the x value, and we're making it 1. So f of 1 is 1 squared minus 6 times 1 plus 5, and pretty straightforward, 1 minus 6 plus 5 is equal to 0. Uh, what I've shown here on the, the bottom, uh, you can use function notation to see this. So, so if I go to our home screen on the calculator, go under VARs, and then Y VARs, and then select function, select Y1, and now we're treating this like function notation. So the problem here was to find F of 1, uh, but now in the calculator we're calling it Y1 of 1, in the parentheses, and sure enough, we get zero. Okay, um, and as because that's the solution to this equation, that is in fact the zero of the function. Uh, if we go into here and look at the zero utility, uh, it's obviously some number between negative one and three, and sure enough, the zero is at one. Okay, f of one is zero. Number nine, uh, evaluate and simplify f of negative one. Well, again, we have our same uh, function. We have x squared minus 6x plus 5. And now algebraically, we're putting negative 1 in. So f of negative 1 is negative 1. Be careful, you have to square that. Minus 6 times negative 1 plus 5. So that's 1 plus 6 plus 5 is 12. Uh, on the calculator, we just, again, we don't have to go vars, y vars, function y1. We could simply recall the previous command, right? And then here, sure, we get 12. Uh, if we look at it in the graphing screen and we just trace and put negative 1 in, uh, we get 12. We don't see the point unless we adjust the window a bit. So that's the second screenshot I've got here. Um, window, let's make the uh, y max up to 20, and maybe we can make the y min just negative 5, just so that we we see, and then trace, x is negative 1, sure enough, we get 12, there's the, there's the cursor. Okay, let me, okay, number 10, evaluate and simplify f of square root of 2. So, again, if we look at our function, uh, we have x squared minus 6x plus 5. And we're asked to substitute the square root of 2 in. So that's the square root of 2 squared minus 6 times the square root of 2 plus 5. Uh, so the square root of 2 squared is 2 minus 6 root 2 plus 5, and we'll add up the rationals, so we get 7 minus 6 root 2. So there's the answer, choice D. Um, uh, note that one of the options was this, this digitally uh, expressed approximation, and you might think, ooh, that's the answer. If we try putting in, I'll just edit the previous command, I put in radical 2, and say, what is that? Well, sure enough, we get that negative 1.4852813374, but that is not the answer, right? That's in the approximation. Uh, the directions did say if this was designated calc to use your graphing calculator, if you did not have the graphing calculator, there's no way you could come up with that approximation. You had to do it algebraically. Number 11. Okay. Number 11, uh, once again, we've got the same quadratic function, f of x is x squared minus 6x plus 5, and we're asked to evaluate f of a half. So 1 half squared, that's going to be a quarter, minus 6 times a half, that's going to be 3 plus 5. So we have 1 fourth minus 3 plus 5. Uh, let's do the positive ones first, so we get 5.25, take away 3, 
which is 2.25. Uh, notice that all the answers are as fractions. So this is 9 fourths. So there's our correct answer. If we jumped on the calculator and tried the same thing, again, we could edit what we already have. Uh, this, and we're putting in uh, one half. I'm going to do that as a decimal, 0 0.5. It would work fine if I used the one half as a fraction. 2.25, nine quarters. And lastly, evaluate and simplify f of negative e. Remember, e is a irrational number about 2.7. So the opposite of E is about negative 2.7. And we're asked to find that value. OK, so again, going back to our calculator, uh, we have x squared minus 6x plus 5. So f of negative E is going to be negative E squared. We're squaring a negative minus 6 times negative E. Negative times the negative is the positive plus 5. So uh, this is simply going to be e squared plus 6e plus 5. And that is the answer. So choice e. Uh, to get a decimal approximation, uh, we can again edit what we previously had, put in the number negative e. Remember, the e button is over here by the pi button. And for a decimal approximation, sure enough, we get 28. 0.6987-4707, but that is not the correct answer, right? That's an approximation, so we can't choose that. We had to do it algebraically um, and get choice E. Okay, uh, we're at almost 17 minutes. We'll stop this here. Uh, I hope you're doing well on your exam debrief.